I've got my work cut out for me. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution R Set Play, and today I am going to be going through my old portfolios. Well, I shouldn't say old. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be going through my portfolios and actually organizing them, and maybe do a little bit of an artwork tour. <laughs> Sorry, my chihuahua just sneezed in the background. Are you okay, honey? Bless you. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm in my living room because this is kind of just a relaxed project that I'm working on in between things. The plan is I have four portfolios here. I'm going to go through them and organize them by date because they're all out of order right now. I just kind of stuff things in there. This is how I store my works on paper until I either frame them or sell them. There are some things in here that I don't plan to sell, so I will be kind of separating what I plan to sell and what I don't plan to sell. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and take out the artwork from all of them and just kind of maybe like talk to you about a few of the artworks as I come across them. This could be a long process. So these are like really old. You can see like these are from 2011. It was a little series that I did. I think it was, did I write on the back? I usually write on the back. It was like some main food series that I was working on. You have an Italian sandwich and, you know, the quintessential lobster dinner and barbecue food. And I used my imagination for a lot of this. Like you can tell, like look how janky these <laughs> these jars are and stuff but yeah I may have used a I don't remember I probably used a reference for the lobster but it's been so many years and I think this is the first print I ever sold on fine art America it's like the first image that I ever sold on there so I think that's kind of cool I don't know if a restaurant has it on their wall or not but it was a small series I worked on I don't remember what watercolors I used I don't know if they are light fast so I will not be ever selling the originals of these a glimpse into my past because some of this stuff is so old and I definitely normally <laughs> I don't even know what's happening here I mean it's fun and sparkly but boy let me tell you This one is one of my all-time favorites. I did this back in 2012. It's a graphite portrait of my husband. And it's so funny because you can tell he's taller than me. And I took this picture <laughs> from below. Um, I think we were like at a cell phone store or something. It's really weird. I think I just snapped a picture of him while we were standing there. And um, then I drew it later on. And I just, I don't know. I had a lot of fun with it. And I love it because it's him. This is one of my all-time favorite portraits. And you can tell at one point I had this in a frame. This was framed behind glass. So let me just take this moment <laughs> to talk about the importance of using, ooh, that was really loud, of using archival materials. I put a lot of work into this. This is a portrait of me and my dad from a photo at my wedding. And you can see, well, I don't know if you can see on there or not, but I can see there's a ridge here where the paper is yellow and then it's white over here. So where the frame used to be, it's turned yellow and you can tell like some of the ballpoint pen is starting to fade because I love drawing with ballpoint pen. However, it's it will fade after time. And this is in 2012. So... It's held up pretty well, but I took it out of the frame probably two years ago and put it in my portfolio to keep it for longer. This was before I knew a lot about archival materials. This was just sketchbook paper, and I'm fairly certain it said it was acid-free, but I mean, this was framed behind glass, and it's already, it's yellowing. So it's just, you know, it's yellowing where the light was. So I would have to say that there's something in the paper that's not archival. And of course, like I said, the ballpoint pen, it might fade over time. Thankfully, I had scanned it at the time, or at least a, a year or two after when it hadn't faded too bad. So I have good copies of it, but this is the original, and there's not ever going to be another original 
and it's very meaningful to me. So now I keep it in my portfolio to try and prolong the life. And I did spray it with fixative too in when I first did it because I always do. But so that's a hard lesson learned. So for all of you out there, just be careful what materials you're using, especially if you're doing something that you know is going to be meaningful to you. So this one is my first ever like real colored pencil piece as an adult. Obviously, I played around with colored pencils as a teenager and as a kid, but I think I had just read the Colored Pencil Painting Bible by Aliona Nicholson, and if you haven't read that book and you're into colored pencils, I highly recommend it. And this is my first time I applied some of the techniques she had taught, and I just fell in love with the medium, and the rest is history from there. For a little while I had thought about doing some coloring book pages from my artwork and I have worked on a few more digitally and I kind of like the digital versions better but these are from some of my artwork. I did some line drawings out of them and then I just never really <laughs> followed through with that project. It would have been fun. I don't know and maybe at some point I'll get back into it but now I think I don't know. I don't know if people are even interested in adult coloring anymore. I know some people are but yeah, I'm not sure. And then this one, you should recognize this one. This is the, this is my end screen. This is the original illustration that I did without the digital edits where I add my artwork on top. So I like to go back and forth between illustration and realism. This one was a lot of fun. I also did one for my sister when it comes to crochet and it was just super fun. Okay, so now my portfolios are empty. <laughs> oh, I can't even, like, I didn't count, but there's a lot of artwork here, and it's a lot of years worth of art. This one is one of my favorite portraits that I've ever done. It's of my husband, Jason, and obviously, I think you may have kind of seen this was the line work I did for it. I did the grid method. I use gridded paper. I only ever do the outlines. So like you can kind of see in the back, I did a few indications of trees, but mostly all those trees were just free handed. Basically, I just did the preliminary outline in a grid, transferred it, and then did all the rest on my drawing paper. And that's typically how I do it when I use the grid method. I don't ever draw a grid on my paper. A, I'm not good at straight lines. And if it's off even by a little, then my husband's gonna look like a totally different person. So I use gridded paper where it's already measured out for me and I already know the lines are straight. And then I don't do each individual little piece for detail. Really, I just want some of my proportions to be correct. Once I have that preliminary outline done, I'm golden. So, and that's how I typically do the grid method in case anybody has ever wondered that. And I don't do the grid method for everything. Typically speaking, I use the grid method when I'm doing things like portraits for accuracy. And then a lot of other things I'll just do differently. And I think I did the grid method for this one too. This is my niece Bailey when she was really little. And this is another one of my favorites. It's just, I don't know. She was just so cute back then. Well, she's still like adorable. So that was one of my favorites. And then this one, is also one of my all-time favorites. This is my father. And this one was back in 2015, so I had only been doing colored pencil. Let me see what the actual date is. For almost a year, I had been doing colored pencil when I did this one, and this was like my crowning achievement back then, and it really like pushed my limits. Right now, I am just sorting. I'm gonna sort first by what will be for sale and what won't be for sale. And then I am going to sort by date and 
obviously I'm going to have to sort a little bit by size to see like what fits in what portfolio. Look at this. This is, look at his little signature. Oh, from 2012. This is a little joint drawing that me and my nephew did when he was little. We do, we've actually got quite a few of these drawings that we've done over the years. It's kind of a tradition in my family. Me and my sister used to do it when we were younger and we used to do it with some friends. I think I have one of these hanging on my studio wall too from my nephew, but yeah. So I am just going to be sorting my life away and then I will probably come back with some more to talk about as far as the artwork goes because some of this is old as heck. Like this one, like what the, what the heck even is this? Like what was I doing here? 2011. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now I'm going to sort by year and something else I decided to do is some month on some of the older ones I am going to look and see what I wrote the information in on the back and if it's something that I think will fade over time I'm just going to go over it with a pit pen so that I can preserve the information on it so that will be fun <laughs> not really it's going to take some time but I have had things fade in the past and I just want to have the information preserved for later on. And this is really for my own record since this pile here are ones that I'm not going to sell. And I'll show you what's in this pile in just a moment. Okay, so I have a lot in this pile. There's probably there's definitely more in this pile than there is in the sell pile, and I'll tell you why. Some of these I don't think are necessarily going to be archival, but I don't remember. This was 2012. I don't remember what materials I used. I probably was using student grade, like, art items that I don't even have anymore. And so I don't know about the light fastness. I don't know about how archival they are. They've kept pretty well because they've been in the portfolio, but I wouldn't want to sell this and risk it. Also, my style is way different than this now. I've advanced a lot more. So I don't even know what I would sell it for because it's just not really up to my standards anymore. These are, some of these things are really just experiments. You know, they might as well be sketchbook items, but they just were on regular paper and not in a sketchbook. So yeah, I didn't put any information on the back as to what materials I use. So some of these things that is going to the, be the case on, some of them are sentimental. And some of them, I just don't like enough to sell them. <laughs> I don't know. Not every piece of artwork I do is going to be good. And definitely not every piece of artwork I did in the past was good. But I can tell you, every one of these led up to where I am now in my, my artistic journey. And so I don't regret any of these, even if I'm not hugely proud of them, even if I wasn't proud of them back when I did them. I learned something from all of them. And that's one reason why it's nice to keep these things and to look back on them. Some of these things, this one I'm not going to sell because it's of my dog Max. This is a soft pastel thing, but you see how all this stuff is sticking to it? I did this on, um, it's like a velvet surface. I was not a fan of this surface, obviously. And now look, like there's lint stuck to it. It's been outside of my portfolio for all of two minutes and there's lint stuck to it. So I wouldn't recommend black velvet and this was made for art like this was specifically made for art this is archival i think yeah it's archival um i had bought it on a whim because i wanted to try something new with pastels and i was getting into pastels at this time this was 2014 you know just soft pastels and so yeah like look at this it's just sticking to it but again this is a pastel piece this is something that needs to be kept in a portfolio because it's going to shed it's going to smudge and things like that and so I keep it in a portfolio and it's my dog max so I'm never gonna sell it and then some of these are just way old of course I already explained this one I'm not gonna sell this this one is one of my first not first first colored pencil pieces but it was in 2015 I was fairly new to it I think this is mainly done with Prismacolor and this is before I had learned about light fastness and so 
while a lot of these probably are light fast, I hadn't sorted through my Prismacolors yet and sorted out the ones that weren't light fast at this point, I don't believe. And so, and I also had used a little bit of gel pen on it. So while this is one of my all time favorite drawings and it's great for prints, I don't dare to sell the original just because I'm not sure how archival it is. So this one I will keep. My newer colored pencil pieces, however, I'm much more aware of these things, and so I will be more apt to sell. Like, I did a Jelly Bean one that's part of this series, which you saw. You saw this Jelly Bean one on my channel already, and this is meant to go with this. I'll sell the Jelly Bean one, but I won't sell this one. Um, and it's kind of the first in my series anyway, so I don't really want to necessarily sell it, because I'm very attached, but because of the archival issues, I won't sell it. So there's different reasons, even if it's something that I really enjoy, there's different reasons why I won't sell certain things in this pile. It's going to be a lot of things from 2012 because I think that's the year that I did over like 140 paintings. Like I was just doing paintings... I don't know. I think in 2011, I did like 111 paintings. And in like 2012, I did like 140 paintings. And I was doing like two a day sometimes. I was just really on an inspirational streak, really trying to practice things and doing a lot of stuff out of my imagination. So there is a ton of stuff from 2011 and 2012 in here. And this was back when I thought that a lot of the artwork needed to be done in one sitting. Like, I used to think I had to do a painting in one sitting, and that's just not the case, and it's not really conducive to the best kind of artwork. Although, I gotta tell you, I do think that doing those sorts of challenges, you know, where people do, like, a hundred faces or a hundred whatever in a certain amount of time does help you grow very quickly. Like, I recommend doing those challenges, but I don't think it's the way to work all the time, because you're not necessarily going to be getting your best artwork every time that way. So I don't regret going through like such a mass amount of artwork all at once because I definitely grew and learned a lot from it. But now I have slowed down and I have seen a much better, like I like my style a lot more now that I've slowed down, I guess I could say. I always really enjoyed realism. I always really admired realism and wanted to do realism. And the best way to do realism is to take your time. And really just the best way to do anything that you want a good outcome on is to take your time and not rush yourself. So while I recommend doing those challenges, I would only do it as a challenge. I don't recommend that as being a, your way of working, although everybody works differently. And so... I can't really judge that there. It's just from my personal experience that I am speaking. I don't know what it is about food, but it always makes me want to do a series. And that was like back in 2012. I loved these paintings so much. It's so funny. Like, and again, so this was from mostly from imagination, and so I would have done better had I had, had actual references, I'm sure, because even back then, I I feel like I could have done better, but I did it from my imagination, and I mean, they're still fun. I had a lot of fun with these, so one reason why I keep them around. Here is a, another series that I did in watercolor, tube watercolor, which I didn't water down enough, <laughs> back in 2011. Again, food themed. See, I've always been obsessed with drawing candy, apparently, drawing and painting it. And so the series that I've been starting on now with colored pencil probably stems off of this. Still one of my favorites. 
You can tell I used like some scrap paper, like already had some stuff on the back. But this one is holiday themed, so we've got Halloween, Easter, Christmas, and Valentine's Day. What a doozy this is. My eyes are starting to get blurry. So I have them sorted by date now. This is, well, you can't really see. There's a pile over here for 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and then like 15 through 17 are in this pile. Because a lot of the ones I did during that time, I have framed and ready to sell already. And then this one is 2018. I have my larger pieces off to the side. These are all the larger pieces that I'm keeping and they're already sorted by the date and like all, you know, all the years are together. Some of my larger pieces that I'm selling again aren't here because they're framed. And then I have a pile here of ones that I'm gonna be getting ready to sell. So I might end up framing them or I might end up just posting them on my website as is. Ooh, this is crazy craziness and so I have these all in order by date starting from like 2012 and now I have to figure out how I want to put them in the four portfolios to give you a little view of what I did I put everything that was this is like the oldest one I have and it can fit both small and large obviously anything from before 2014 which is where I started colored pencil I put in here so some of my older artworks this is from 2000 this one's from 2009 I don't know if there's a glare and I apologize and this one was from 2008 I think and then you can just see like this one's a lot longer. So then I just went in order by date after that. So 2011, 2012, 2013 are all in here. I have really old portfolios upstairs um, that are more like albums of my oldest artwork from when I was a kid. That's something that you're interested in seeing at any point. And yeah, so that's kind of how I chose to organize it. I put two in each, but it's going along with dates. Um, this one has three in it. It's just really a way to keep them. This is some weird thing that I did as a commission or somebody wanted me to do it as a commission. Totally not my typical style. Never ended up going anywhere with it, but yeah. So there's this one. And then in the back, I have some prints of my old artwork that I had made up. A long time ago then I started working on my larger ones like a larger portfolio of the ones that I'm keeping from 2014 on this looks so dark in here because it's black velvet this is a portrait I did of my friend Brandy and actually this one's probably gonna go to her which was the intention um, this is one of my best friends that I grew up with from the time that I was like really, really young. She would say I was seven because she thought I was seven when she met me because I look younger than I am. Um, she's pretty much like a sister to me. One of the brandies I grew up with because I have a couple brandies that are like sisters to me. But she is one of my best friends ever. And I will probably eventually give this to her. I've been meaning to frame it and it just hasn't happened because it needs special framing because of this shape and size. And then you saw this one of my dad, Halloween, my niece, my friend Chantel, Little Red Riding Hood. So she was actually the original model for this. And I took the reference photos the same day, but I made the person blonde and changed, changed her a little bit. But that's, she, this is from that same photo shoot. And my hubby. And plenty of space in there. 
then this one is the small one of the ones I'm going to keep. We've talked about this one. and It just goes down the line. Some of them I put two in. You've seen a lot of these in this video. And I apologize if the lighting is kind of weird. I've been at this for a few hours now, technically. Um, so the lighting, I'm using natural light and it's changing on me. And then this is the one for the ones that I'm going to be selling. I need to organize this better. It's a lot bigger than what I need. And um, I'm going to be doing different things. This is just temporary for me to hold on to them this way, temporary, because I need a better way to do it. But this is my way of storing them for now until I sell them or frame them or whatever. All right, so that was a lot of work and a lot of artwork. And this is really heavy. And I really appreciate you coming along with me on this. I'm sorry if it was boring as heck. This is one of the not so fun parts of being an artist, organization and storage and all that fun stuff. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, more sketchbook tours or artwork tours, just let me know in the comments below. I will see you next time. Have a great night or day or whatever it is when you're watching this. <laughs> Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media, so check out the links in the description below.